Hello everyone, my name is Joy, and today I'm going to be sharing a geometric movement method class with you. Just a short class. Most of you that have taken my class in person know that we usually start with some bar work at the beginning. Now, I wanted to have a bar here to show the option with a bar, but you can do all the bar work actually without a bar as well. And I'm going to be showing that for those of you at home who maybe want to practice but don't have a bar. Also, you can use a wall for stability, so even if you have a wall you can stand next to and just get and place your hand on, that can help with some of this balance work as well. So the other two items I have here is a kettlebell, this is five pounds, and a yoga block. So if you don't have a kettlebell, you can use anything with weight to it, whether that's a water bottle or just something a little heavy to hold in your hand or a regular hand weight. And if you don't have a yoga block, all the stuff that I show with the yoga block, you'll be able to do with your feet just flat on the floor or your knees flat on the floor as well. But the yoga block can add some fun for those of you that have that equipment at home and want to track it. So the first thing we're going to do is start with our feet. So typically the way I would teach is I have people stand behind the bar, feet together, Toes and heels touching. However, if you're at a wall, you can simply face the wall. Toes and heels touching. For the purpose of this, for those of you that are doing this at home, I'm also going to show though without the bar. So I'm going to have toes and heels touching. If I don't have a bar, I may just want to hold the arms to the side for stability. And just rising up to the toes and down. The goal here is to keep your heels together. So a lot of a sickle, what happens is like something like this. We want to squeeze those heels together. So that's why again the bar can be helpful when we're first doing this because even if we're someone who has a really great balance on our relevé or up on our toes, like with the bar, if you're feeling wobbly, you can hold on, you have something to hold to, but just try about six more with me here with those heels pressing together. So we go up one, heels stay together the whole time. Two, breathing in, exhale, three, breathing in, exhale, four, inhale, exhale, five, here's six, seven, here's eight, here's nine, and here's ten. Ooh, and I said I almost didn't even tap because I said six, but I went for ten. Guys, it happens all the time. We might do a few extra because we're having so much fun. So if you need to stop, you can always stop. Check your balance here without the bar. You can see it's getting a little wobbly. It's a little tough. So have that wall. Have that bar if you need it. Heels are together. Breathe in. Don't let those heels fall apart. Four, three, two, and let's release. We're going to stretch our calves. So again, if you have a wall or a bar, you can kind of push one heel like back. If you're just doing this on your mat without a bar, just bend one knee, push that heel back. So we're trying to really release those calves after all that work. It's really important to release the calves. Now we're going to come back into some more. So that was just a quick stretch. We're going into heels together, toes apart. This is our Pilates knee stand or in ballet, our first position. So geometric movement method, we use methods from dance, from yoga, from Pilates. So a lot of things coming together. So we're going to take a little plie bend in our knees. We're going to let our heels peel up. Straighten up and squeeze the heels down. Again, hold a bar or a wall if you're feeling a little wobbly. Heels up straight through the knees and we float down. And two more. Just letting those calves get that nice stretch by keeping the heels down on the mat. Letting the heels come up, strengthen those arches, rise up, stretch the kneecaps. Let them pull up those tendons around the knees to feel really strong. Lower down the control. Last one, breathe in. Exhale and, sh and squeeze down. Good. Let's come up, rise to our toes, reverse that, bend the knees. Push the heels down, straight legs, and rise up toes. Bend the knees, push the heels down, straight legs, couple more. Rise toes, bend the knees, push the heels down, straight legs, one more time, rise toes. Bend the knees, heels down, as we go straight legs, one arm over head, one across the belly, or if you have your bar, maybe one hand's on the bar, and you're just reaching, and the other way side. Okay, so I like to do this cambre. Again, I'm gonna show with the bar how this might look. So. I'm actually going to turn the bar sideways so I can see a couple of things. So if I'm here doing that first position with the counter, one hand on the bar, I'm going to try to keep my hips level with the bar or with the wall if you have a hand on the wall. Just let the sternum up and arch back. Keep your legs in the same position and then stack shoulder over head. You're strengthening your abdominal muscles here as well as learning to straighten your back. So that bar thing, if you need it, you get your two. Uh, toes peeling away, squeeze those toes into the floor. We reach back, breathe in, exhale, stack shoulders over hips. Two more on one side and up. And remember, you can do this from without the bar as well. So you might just arch back and come up. Just for those of you at home, I like to show that sideways view so you can kind of see what we're doing here. It's not 
I'm working on the hips passing forward. I'm going to keep those hips right where they would be if the shoulders were there. And just let that sternum march back and stack the shoulders up the hips. Breathe in. Exhale, come up. Use that breath. Two more. Breathe in. Exhale, back up. One more. Breathe in. Exhale up. Good. Okay, so if you go back to parallel. Again, you do this with or without a bar. So if you're at your center and shoulders over hips without a bar, I'm going to show that first. Arms are by the ears. You're going to start to pull your abdominals in. I feel like you're creating some length here in your lower back. So if your lower back is arched, you feel that length coming out. You're going to reach with your fingertips forward to a flat back. Breathe in. And then exhale, reach the fingers out and come up. So right now, I'm just showing what that looks like without the bar. We're just reaching from that lower back. Breathe in. Exhale, supporting from the abdominals to come back up. We're feeling a little stretch in our hamstrings as well. If we use the bar, we reach. We might hold the bar. Let the head go past the arms. So I do really enjoy the bar for this one for that moment of release. If you're doing this at the wall, you can literally just press your hands on the wall and then let your head go past where that wall would be. And there you can drop lower if you have a bar with a lower setting or maybe you're using a countertop or anywhere really that you can hold on to the back of the chair even. Take a little bend in the knees. Feel that head all in between the arms. Okay, now we engage through our core again. Belly button towards spine. Hinge from the hips. Come up. Beautiful job. Let's do two more like that. Breathe in. Exhale. Find your hinge. Just tap the bar on the wall or the air lightly and come up. I'm going to mostly do this moving from our lower back. So I'm going to show without the bar. Just reaching out. Breathe in. Exhale. One thing I like to do without the bar is to do this nice fold. Plie. Reach the arms high. Keep that flat back. Arms in front. Hinging back up. Two more times. Breathe in. Exhale. Lengthen through that flat back. Reach out. Reach forward, lengthen the legs, slowly hitting up one more time, breathe in. Forward, bend, reach the arms side, arms out, and then we unhinge. Really nice. So as you can see, when I came down, I made that right angle. So one reason we call this osteometric movement method is because we are working on finding those angles that we can hinge in our hips, our shoulders, and all of that. So I'm going to show this one from the front. Um, but again, you can use the bar if you need stability. So what's going to happen here is we're going to have our elbows out to the side, almost like goal posts. They're going to squeeze towards each other and then open. Think about what would happen if your elbows could touch. Some of you might find that they do. You're going to feel your arms really waking up. Now we're going to keep that motion in the arms. We're going to add something. So let's shift off of one foot. So we're on one leg. And we're going to let this knee open out to the side. So try to check in that we can find this hinge. If it feels really close in, let it go. Especially those of us that do a lot of dance and we're always in that path day. We've got to release our hamstring a little bit here. So just relax. You can even hold your thigh and just kind of swing from the knee joint. You want that ankle to be able to kind of dangle from the knee. And again, I'm getting a little wobbly, which is why if you have the bar, that can be a nice place for stability for this as we rotate that knee in and out. So you may prefer to just like put your hand on a chair, a bar, and just do a few of these first. When you're ready, we're going to be opening and closing. Opening and closing in. Eight, and really keeping that heel hanging from the knee. Seven, and close. Breathe in, exhale, six. Inhale, exhale, five. Inhale, exhale, four. Inhale, exhale, three. You're doing great. Don't give up here. Breathe in. Exhale, here's two. On our last one, we're going to squeeze it in. Push your heel back. Reach your arms overhead. Can you come out to a flat back? So I'm going to show this from the side. If I have the bar, it might look like this. If I don't have the bar, I'm just reaching and balancing out. And then we're going to pick that knee back up in front of us, open it out again, close it in, and reach back forward either to your wall, your bar, your chair, or just <laughs> on your own <laughs> without any stability helping you. Again, everyone's at a different level, so if you're newer to something like this, I'm guessing a bar, a chair, or a wall is going to really help. If you're just doing dance for a long time, you have pretty good balance, you may prefer the challenge of no bar, no wall or anything. Okay, let's set that down. Ooh, arms get tired from that. Just from doing this without weights or anything. Let's go to the other side, okay? Knee is open, breathe in. Exhale, just close in. Open, let's keep our breath flowing with us. 
that breath we take from yoga, I incorporate that into all of my movements, whether I'm dancing, doing Pilates, or whatever. That breath is everything. It keeps us awake in our body. It keeps our muscles having the energy they need to get through these movements. Four, so don't lose that breath. Breathe in. Exhale, three, breathe in. Exhale, two, good. We have one more, breathe in. Exhale, last one. Send the leg back, arms forward, leg back. Breathe in, exhale, knee comes back up, open. Breathe in, exhale, close, let's send it back again. Straight line through the body. It doesn't have to be parallel to the floor. So some people might say, oh gosh, like my leg's only going back this far. That's absolutely fine. If you go further, go further. But take your own pace. Each side's gonna be a little bit different. Slow down if needed, okay? To do three more. Check that balance, it's so tough. Lots of balance work for this class when we do the standing portion. But we will get it out to the floor after this exercise because we've been doing a lot. We're just doing a little mini class today. You're doing amazing, breathe. Good job, come up and let's set that foot down. Our arms will be a little tired, hands behind the back. Let's press our chest forward, hinge, fold, release, or even if you want to put hands on the wall, chair bar. Just hang a little bit, a little bit more. Bend the knees. All right, feel free to maybe raise one leg back and do a couple of pulses with the toes pointing down just to wake up that left hamstring. And you can do this also from like a forward fold like you would maybe see more in yoga. So I take lots of options to give everyone depending on their level, okay? Let's go back. Maybe just reach your hands forward on the box, raising the opposite leg, just doing a few pulses, heel up, just to open up that other leg on the hamstring. And again, if you need more, come down, maybe further to the floor. Pulse it up, four, three, two, good. Let that foot come down, soften the knees, roll up. Before I take the bar away, I'm going to show you one more little stretch. So we're going to just pull our heel in towards the glute. Now, if this is something that you can do without the bar, just balance here. Try to check that the knee's not swinging forward. You want to pull the knee back. Sometimes we might find ourselves not being able to quite reach the foot. In that case, one thing you can do with a wall is to kind of see where you can maybe find the top of your foot on the wall and ease into that stretch by softening the front knee. Now again, you have to be really mindful and I would still recommend if you're using the wall to do that, to have like a chair or something to hold on to because again, we don't want to fall. If we're working our balance, you know, we might have to use some props to help us for a while and then our balance gets much better over time. Let's do other side. So just hold it here, nice and tall, breathing. Check it by either bringing the knee a little further back or if it's kind of in front, make sure it's at least one in line with the other knee. Wake up that quad, good. And then you can do a standing stretch, ankle over knee like this, centered without the bar, as I'm showing here. Or if you have a bar and wall or chair, you can hold on and sit back. So these are just some more standing stretches we can do to release those hips. All right, once we're done with that, I'm just gonna move this bar out of the way. We're gonna do just a few things on the floor. So let's do, actually, before we get to the floor, let's grab our kettlebell, okay? I like to do this one, again, sometimes people use the bar for stability, but I like to do this one with an opposite hand to foot. So this is, right now, the right hand I have in my left leg. I'm gonna put left arm side, bend left knee, and just try tapping that kettlebell down and then pulling the elbow back. Now, you may want to use a black just to have, like, if you're like, I am not going to get my weight of kettlebell all the way to the floor, sometimes the black can be a nice little aim for us, okay? Again, I'm going to show up the wall. For those of you who need a wall for this, you just put one hand on the wall and move up, okay? Otherwise, here we go. Let's go eight and seven and checking in our balance, six and five, breathing. Four, then slow down the pace if you need to. Three, we're doing great. Breathing in, exhale, two. All right, all right, all right, last one. Breathing in, exhale, one, good. Let's switch, other leg. So we go down for two. When we come up, I like to pull that elbow back, okay? So rather than just coming like halfway up, make sure you're coming all the way up, driving those hips forward, driving that knee forward. Try to find that passe toe to knee position, okay? Like a parallel passe position. As we got this for four more, three, and two, pulling back, 
put that on the last one. Good. Okay, now from a little kneeling position. Now you can do this standing as well. I like to vary how we do things. So if kneeling bothers you, just do this standing. But I'm going to take the right arm up by the ear and just drop that weight behind the head and send it up. Whether it's a hand weight, water bottle, or kettlebell, whatever you have, let it go behind you and up. And I'm just kind of holding on to the right shoulder blade with the left hand as this kettlebell in the right hand just to keep that arm staying close by the ear. We don't want it to like get out here. We want to keep that arm really close by the ear. Four, three, two, one. Okay, we're going to keep the same arm for a moment and bring that arm to a round shape and place our left hand down. We're going to try to widen and open side, set the combo down, and kick our left leg up. So we go one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. Two more sets like that. One, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. Good. Okay. So I'm just turning around for the other side. So about that wrist that was supporting if needed. Remember, you can stand up if your knees bother you to sit and just drop and press. You can do this standing for sure, but if you'd like, come down to knees. Just really focusing on that. Keep that breath going. Six, five, breathing and exhale, four, breathe and exhale, three, breathe and exhale, two, and one. Okay, we're going to round this arm. So we're going to have like this continual rounded shape. And we're going to open that arm side, down, kick the opposite leg back. So this is my left hand opening. It's going to be right leg kicking back. Four, six, and kick. Four, one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, you're doing great. Last set, three, four, and five, six, seven, and eight. Good job. Okay, so we're here. Let's take one arm across our chest, circle that wrist. <sighs> Reverse, good job. Okay, other side, circle the wrist. Reverse, good. One arm up behind the head, just take a little stretch and switch. Okay, so let's take one seated position now with our legs out in front of us and lengthen out the back of those legs. Just round the back, breathe in. Exhale, lengthen the arms up and let's take a nice forward fold here. Take a few moments. And what's going to happen is we're going to scoot our hips up until we can lay down and find each vertebrae of that spine mounting into the floor. Shuffle the heels in, arms overhead, and we're just going to do a few folds up through the spine and back down. Maybe do two or three of these at your own pace. Good. Inhale, exhale. Roll through each vertebrae. Mount back down. Last one. Roll up. All right. Now, as we mount down, we're going to take a moment and find our paddle back. We're going to lift our shoulders away from the floor. Reach back as if you can tap that kettlebell on the floor. Reach back up and then mount the shoulders back down. Just two more times. Shoulders lift. And this could be a weight, water bottle, or even just your arms without anything. Two more. Lift. Reach back up, slowly relax the shoulders. Remember, you're feeling the shoulder blades lift up. Take them away, back up, melt the shoulder blades down. Really nice. Let's take our block set it between our knees, or you can even just put a top between your knees, anything like that. We're gonna hold our kettlebell steady, or wherever we're holding above us. We're gonna just bring our knees to the right, feel our abs engage. Don't let that block release. Come back center, other side. Breathe in. Ooh, exhale comes out. It's fun to see which sides go weird. Some sides go a lot further than others. So check in with that. Use your breath. Breathe in. Exhale, let's do one more each way. We're just doing a couple sets on everything today because when we're first learning stuff, doing a lot of sets is not always necessary. We're just getting that feeling. Good. Releasing there. Let's set just our left foot under the block. 
We're going to keep our right hand holding the kettlebell. I like to hold it kind of like from the inside so the outside can hang down. Just that right toe on top of left knee. And we're going to push the right leg and the right arm up together. Breathe in and exhale, soften down. So we're just going to go one and two. We're coming back to that toe to the knee position just to try to find that engagement in the core to really release the lower back. Three, four. Here's five. You're doing a beautiful job. Don't give up. Six. Almost there. Seven. Now on eight, we're going to hold it up at the top. Stay up with that straight leg and pass the kettlebell all the way to your left hand. You're just going to bring your right leg and your left arm away. Pull back in for one. Pull away. Back in for two. Pull away. Back in for three. Last one. Good. Four. Nice. Take it down. Let's switch. Bring this all over to the right side. Okay. We're going to start with left toe on, right elbow down. Breathe and exhale. Lift one. And two. And three. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. My bad. I should have been in left hand. So it's okay if you mix it up. Four. Just switch back to the other hand if you need to. Five. Six. So right now we have the left leg and the left arm standing up. Seven. Here's eight. Almost there. Keep that breath going. Nine. And our last one time, we're going to stay up. And now we put the kettlebell in the right hand. And we're going to take that arm leg away from the body and pull back in. Trying to keep the hips off the floor. And they're a little higher up with that block as well. Two more. Good. Last one. Beautiful. All right. Come to center. Relax. Okay. Set that kettlebell down. I'm just breathing. I'm checking the time, making sure we have time for everything good, guys. We should be able to get in the last couple things here. Okay, so we're going to start on left knee. I'm sorry, let's actually, I'm going to use the leg closest to you. So I'm going to put my right knee on the block, okay? Left knee is off. Just start with all I'm doing here is pulling the left hip up in line with the right knee for four, three. This is strengthening our lower back. Two, on one, we pause and hold it up. We're gonna open that knee. Take it down and relax. And lift, open. Take it down and relax, you're doing great. Lift, open. Take it down and relax. Last one, lift, open. Take it down and relax. Good, let's switch sides. Left knee on the block. I'm gonna turn around so you can see what's happening with the knee drop. Left knee on the block, wrist right under shoulders, okay? We pull up, down one. Up, down two, up, down three, four, really lengthening through the lower back and feeling those lower back muscles and glutes pulling up. Two more. Seven, this is great strengthening for that lower back. And eight, now we open and we close, release one. Lift, open, slowly release to the floor. Three, good. Last one, lift. Four, good, relax, down, great job. All right, you guys have done amazing so far. This is a lot to do. Let's have our hands on the block and just have in front of us a little child's pose. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Good job. Okay, let's do a little back work and then we'll finish up, okay? So we have our legs extended behind us, our block out in front of us, or even really anything. You could stack some books up, whatever you want. Just put a few items out in front of you. The higher up, so like I can put my block like this, that's going to be a little bit easier. If I flip the block a little higher, it's definitely going to be a little harder. Okay, so we're going to let our head fall between the arms so it's like we did at the wall. Keep your arms extended. Don't let the elbows drop. Keep them lengthening. And we're just going to lift our legs one. Lift our legs two. Keep that forehead down, keep the arms lengthening. Four. Inhale, exhale. Five. Six. Seven. Now when they hold it up, see if you can raise your arms and keep your head in between those arms. Let's squeeze our elbows in. Reach everything out one. Squeeze in. Reach out two. Squeeze in. Reach out three. Last one. Breathe in. Exhale four. And hands under shoulders. We're going to curl up. Half her all the way. Breathe in. Great job, exhale. Sit those hips back to heels. Catch your breath. Let's take that little thread the needle that we do in yoga. So left arm's gonna come up and thread on your right. Just stretch out between those shoulder blades. Great job, breathe in. Exhale, switch. We'll take a right arm up. Thread on your left, 
breathe in. Exhale, stretch out, turn those shoulder blades all the way down that spine. Breathe in. Good, good, good. Exhale, come up. And now let's do one little check in on our balance. Have a strong leg reaching out, one front, one back. Slowly release, switch sides. Good, toes tuck under, downward dog. Walk the feet out. Make sure those calves have gotten a nice stretch. And we're gonna raise up one leg behind us and just point and flex that foot. One, two, three, and four. Good. Take that leg down and switch sides. Noticing the higher the leg goes, the more deep stretch you feel on the opposite leg. One, two, three, four, and five. Softly release that knee. Walk those feet out again. And then we'll just step one foot up towards the hand. Make a little triangle shape in the legs. Hang over that front leg. Big breath in. Exhale. Let's come through saddle. Look down your both legs. Switch to the other side. Hang over that front leg. Check in with your hips. Maybe shifting your weight forward and back. So you find that even spot. Good, good, good. Back center. Look down your both legs. Breathe in. Exhale. Soften the knees. Roll up. Woo! Take a moment. Shake it out. Let's take one more roll down. Bend the knees, breathe in. Exhale, straight through the legs, roll up. Good, bring our feet together. Sift the arms up, breathe in. Exhale, thank you guys, you did a beautiful job. That was just like a mini class. It's always hard to fit everything I'd love to fit in in one little video, but I'm glad you're here working out. If you would love more classes like this, subscribe and post a new class every Saturday. And it's really fun to just be able to share with some of you who work out at home. So thanks for being here. Have a beautiful day and see you soon. Bye.